Hi, uh, I'm uh, Borzu Dergahi of The Independent, um, and we're here to uh, discuss, as part of the Horasis uh, uh, Forum, uh, we're here to discuss uh, the, 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 um, uh, possi the, the, the possibilities uh, and challenges for South-South cooperation in terms of uh, overcoming the coronavirus crisis but also just to look at other um, uh, looking at other challenges. I mean, I think that the coronavirus crisis has underscored uh, perhaps more than any other uh, crisis, perhaps more than any other um, recent big event around the world, uh, that the North, the global North, the so-called developed world does not have all the answers. Um, it's been botching the uh, coronavirus more than uh, perhaps uh, some uh, uh, less developed countries. Um, and especially if you look at countries uh, such as the United States, um, uh, Great Britain right now, uh, Russia, uh, e even Brazil, these big countries that are uh, ruled by these kind of very chauvinistic right wing governments. Uh, they've failed utterly, especially when it comes to dealing with the coronavirus crisis. And those countries that are led uh, by more uh, sort of moderate, less ambitious uh, uh, people, thinking, for example, of New Zealand, uh, even Germany, uh, have dealt with it better. Um, uh, and you look at uh, countries of the, the global south uh, struggling to, to prevent uh, the coronavirus outbreak from spreading to their lands, uh, you know, they're doing just as well uh, to, to a large extent, if not better than some of their uh, more powerful and wealthier uh, uh, counterparts on the other side of the world. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, it seems like a lot of people have had some technical problems and we don't have a lot of um, uh, uh, participants uh, and many of the speakers have not appeared. Maybe they'll appear soon. Um, uh, there's been some uh, confusion and some struggling with the um, uh, the platform, uh, uh, the the, uh, the 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 ability to connect on the part of ability to connect. Um, I know that uh, one of the participants was warning that she um, uh, was unable to. Um, it, uh, oh, I'm getting an email right now from one of the parts. It starts now, I'm telling you. It starts now. It's on now. Um, one of the participants was saying that she was uh, unable to uh, 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 connect or she was warning that she might be unable to connect simply because, uh, you know, in speaking of South's uh, problems, Bogolo uh, Kenawando was saying that she was having problems with electricity and Internet today. And so she may not be able to connect. Um, but uh, joining us is uh, Jose da Silva Gonçalves. He is a former minister of economy. Uh, employment and as well as tourism and transport for Cape Verde. He uh, served from 2016 to 2020, um, and he uh, uh, overseen a, a va uh, let, let's call his expertise because he has been dealing with a, a wide array of uh, topics uh, in, in, and sectors, including tourism, trade, industry, energy, air and maritime transport um, on, a, on a sort of governmental level. Um, uh, he's also a Western educated uh, graduate of the University of California, Los Angeles, um, and the uh, Harvard Business School uh, as well. And uh, uh, you, you, I, I guess I just wanted to ask you, um, what, uh, 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 Dr. Gonsalves, what, if anything, can developing countries learn from the mishandling of the coronavirus crisis on the part of these, you know, big, often arrogant, um, uh, uh, so-called developed countries like the United States and Great Britain. Well, Borzu, it's uh, good to be back uh, with you again uh, since a couple of days ago when we met virtually. Um, <clears throat> and to go just to jump right into the subject matter of the discussion you, you raise. Um, uh, you know, I think the, uh, you know, the, what has happened is that uh, 
the COVID-19 has created havoc throughout the world, north, south, east, and west. Uh, we're right in the middle of the storm. Uh, I, the storm, I would say still, uh, there is no cure in sight to mitigate the effects, nor vaccine, despite claims by industrialized uh, nations in the north. Uh, in particular, including Russia, of course, and even China, uh, but uh, Europe and North America, talking about, uh, you know, accelerating uh, uh, a, a vaccination, which the general public doesn't really want uh, to, uh, to, does not seem to want to go along uh, the line, because there is not the confidence that, indeed, uh, this thing uh, has been overly politicized, um, and everyone is running on their own. So I think the South, uh, to go direct to your question, the South doesn't have very much to learn other than to avoid the mistakes which the North have been doing. Uh, the North, I think, um, you know, between um, countries vying for protagonism, uh, who is going to be first, basically, uh, the leader first off the block, um, the pharmaceuticals, major pharmaceuticals, the universities, if you, if you see really the name brands out there, it, it's the, you know, European and North American. And we don't hear much about India. I'm sure they have the prowess as well in China. Uh, we know they're doing their own thing, but, uh, as we are consuming the information in the West, uh, by and large, we see Northern Europe and North America, uh, really talking about the, the you know, the, uh, the miracles they're going to create, uh, but the, the few attempts uh, that have been out there have been, uh, you know, missteps, uh, you know, um, uh, in, 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 I think in the UK, uh, when they attempted a little while ago, they had to step back just because people just do not understand what really beast we are dealing with at this point. So the South, beware and really uh, don't, don't imitate the mistakes of, uh, of the North. And so we have to kind of be cautious, wait and see. And I think that um, we need right now to pay attention, uh, despite the effort of some um, uh, countries to discredit the, the World Health Organization. Uh, it is the only uh, agency internationally that I think speaks to all North, South, East and West. Uh, all the others are partisans, uh, have their own uh, ideology, their own uh, um, you know, um, a beef uh, to grind. Uh, so I think the South, we should l listen carefully to scientific facts and the guidance, which I think the World Health Organization has been providing. Great. We are um, 70 years after decolonization. Um, you know, we, we're, we, we've moved a long way from the uh, the, the, the sort of dominant role of the West, um, at least in terms of time. Um, what, is, what are the obstacles to South-South cooperation? Is it a psychological, why, like for example, let's take a look at one region that I, I kind of know well as a, uh, as a journalist, North Africa. Um, these are countries, Algeria, Morocco, Libya, Tunisia, um, Egypt to an extent, Mauritania, and they have almost like very, except for the possible exception of, you know, just some border areas, there's very little trade, very little cooperation, uh, very little, you know, actual um, integration between those countries of North Africa. It's all done through France, mostly Italy. Um, they have way more trade with the, the West, way more connections to the West, way more aspirations to the West. Uh, that, than uh, with their own neighbors. Um, why? What is the stumbling block? Is it psychological? Is it um, logistical? Are these, you know, once these, I, I mean, you're, and this is what's so valuable about having someone with your uh, particular expertise and skill set. Um, is it a matter of once certain trade and transport patterns are set in place, they're very hard to shift? Is that part of it? Um, I would be very curious to what, 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 what are the impediments to more South-South cooperation, either on COVID or anything else? Well, I think that the obstacles at our various levels, you know, there is um, the whole aspect of uh, the, the, the social and relational dimension of business and networking. 
Um, but we, underlying that is the financial uh, institutions. Look how the central banks uh, are dealing with uh, local banks, the relationship, uh, certainly the Bank of France and dealing with all, uh, I speak uh, to this extent, uh, in the whole continent of Africa, not just uh, North Africa, but the whole continent, we find the same situation that the infrastructure, uh, look at the transport, for example, very little uh, um, uh, transportation. I mean, there's uh, the African Union is trying to get one, uh, uh, you know, SATAM, which is uh, one transportation market in the whole of Africa. But we find only 27 nations, uh, I think uh, 30 nations right now, have joined out of 54 nations. Uh, what you find is usually it's easier from... Um, uh, a, a country like Cape Verde in West Africa, the westernmost uh, country in West Africa, um, actually uh, dealing with a country like Rwanda, which is not perceived as a threat. But the neighboring countries, for example, and Rwanda is launching the, their new uh, airline and doing very well. Cape Verde, we were in the process of creating a hub, and we were beginning to fly to Nigeria uh, and Senegal, and Angola uh, to link uh, to markets uh, to to destinations such as uh, Washington D.C., Boston, uh, and uh, Toronto was coming up now, and to link the different continents. Because what were the uh, people from Nigeria uh, doing before coming to the U.S.? Well, by and large, they're coming through Europe to fly to the U.S. So Cape Verde, we decided, look, let us work at the level of logistics and air transport and uh, being a country well certified in its aviation and create the link where we link the four continents. It's in terms of time benefit. It's almost half the time to fly from from um, uh, uh, Lagos to, to Washington, D.C., than to go via Europe if you go via Cape Verde. So, um, uh, so we need to do at one level is to create the relationship. Countries need to break down their barriers uh, in, 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 and work, facilitate more with the neighbors. Don't perceive your neighbor, unfortunately, as competitors, uh, as detractors. Be more facilitating. So we don't have that at one level, unfortunately. And you know, uh, policymakers really need to take that seriously. And so that have one air transport sector. So logistics, mobility, uh, if you border control, for example, visas within Africa it is a, a nightmare. You know, we in West Africa, we don't need visa in the 15 countries that in that community. There are five clusters of countries in West Africa, for, in Africa, that within their communities, their visa facilitation. But from one cluster in West Africa to another cluster, say for the west africa north africa or, or west africa to east africa you know to get the visa you, you just uh, it's almost impossible so all these limit the uh, uh, mobility of scientists of uh, business people and when you don't have, a, have transportation network airlines flying ethiopian airlines is basically the only exception we have that seems to be working to link africa and thank god because it is really uh, quite uh, quite uh, quite uh, a good transporter and has any good but other than that there's very little linking africa overall in terms of um, uh, the need to bring us closer together at this moment, I would like to welcome uh, uh, Dr. Ajmal uh, Shams, who is the president of the Afghan Social Democratic Party, um, also an, an engineer uh, uh, educated at the University of Kentucky. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, today. Really yeah, appreciate th it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? And I, I understand you see me. Yeah, yes, we, Ajmal, we hear you. Very fine. Fine. Yes. The only thing I'm going to ask you is when you're not speaking, there seems to be a little bit of feedback. Uh, when you're not speaking, if you could just hit the mute button when you're not speaking, not right now is great. Uh, but when you're not speaking, because what happens is that it feeds back. Oh, and then we have um, uh, joining us also is Sergio uh, uh, Saleichau. Uh, the the uh, Secretary of Culture I, I, of Sao Paulo State. He will join us. Hi, how are you? Uh, good to see you here as well. Welcome. Bon dia. 
<laughs> Buen día. Yeah. Great to see you here. Um, <coughs> and so uh, we're here. I, bon dia. Thank great you. To see you. <laughs> great. Um, uh, Dr. Shams, uh, to bring you into the conversation, and uh, when, when you do begin to speak, please uh, unmute yourself. Um, I guess I just wanted to ask you, um, uh, just we're very interested in, in general, everyone's interested in what's happening in Afghanistan. It's a country in a, in a, um, uh, uh, a very rough situation right now. Um, there is a, uh, a multi-layered war um, there is a, you know, uh, foreign military presence. There is a, a vicious insurgency and then a vicious insurgency within that vicious insurgency. Um, and meanwhile, you have this pandemic that is uh, uh, striking the country uh, as well, uh, uh, flooding in from Iran, uh, which is the worst hit uh, uh, coronavirus struck country in the Middle East. Um uh, uh, there, there's a lot of traffic between those two countries and so on. What can, um, you know, we, we know that Western humanitarian organizations, Médecins Sans Frontières, um, the, uh, 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 the various, the, the UN, the United Nations, the uh, various constellation of aid groups they help uh, in terms of providing medical relief and providing supplies and so on. What can Afghanistan's neighbors do and what are they doing um, to provide help and support at this troubling time for this country? Yeah, first of all, thank you very much uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Rector, who uh, invited me to participate in this uh, great platform. Uh, it was supposed to be held in uh, in in, uh, uh, in 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 which country was that? Uh, Portugal, Portugal, in, Portugal, in Sky Sky. Uh, Portugal, yeah. yeah. But because of the COVID nineteen, it was uh, postponed, and then uh, we had to meet uh, virtually. So first of all, I I would like to thank Dr. Rector, yourself, um, all other distinguished participants, and maybe um, our audience from around the the globe that might be. Uh, listening to us uh, right now. So I would say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to different parts of the world. Uh, thank you, Minister uh, De Selva um, uh, and, and yourself uh, for, 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 uh, for being part of this, uh, this panel. So you have uh, raised um, uh, the right uh, questions related to Afghanistan. Um, we have been a country in, in war and conflict for, for about four uh, decades. And as you mentioned, the insurgency has been uh, going on. Um, but, but we have some good news uh, for the past, uh, since the past uh, one and a half or two years, there are uh, efforts uh, uh, being um, initiated by uh, by the U.S. government and 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 also by the Afghanistan government and also the armed oppositions uh, to to reach a political settlement uh, and to bring back, bring back peace to Afghanistan because without peace uh, no economic and development agenda can succeed in Afghanistan you know so 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 the people of Afghanistan. Uh, the region and the, the the international community and the entire world now realizes how peace and security are important for for for, for political and economic stability uh, of Afghanistan. So we we are uh, optimistic. Uh, there are uh, of course challenges ahead uh, for the peace negotiations, but we are optimistic that uh, uh, the ongoing peace negotiations with the uh, uh, opposition groups might result into a political settlement and we will be on our way to uh, development. Now, um, regarding, um, you know, um, uh, the, the, the points uh, you raised, uh, so yes, Afghanistan has been in very um, difficult um, uh, situation uh, for the past four decades and especially uh, the, 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 the corona pandemic has hit Afghanistan very hard. Uh, not so much in terms of um, 
the 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 fatality rate uh because it was in the uh, range of 2% to 3% but the economic impacts uh of of this pandemic was uh, was uh, was huge it was very significant we the country was uh, was uh, was in lockdown for almost uh, uh 4 to 5 months so we 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 are a country that is economically dependent on on our neighbors um you know we 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 import uh, food and medicine and other supplies from from our neighboring countries like pakistan um iran and you know countries of uh, central asia and and we also have trade with india so that was all affected very significantly due to due to the corona uh, pandemic um there were virtually no flights uh, and also the trade um the the uh, uh transport um through roads linkages that was also seriously interrupted uh but uh, now things are slowly uh, moving back to normal um and we hope that in the months ahead uh, we will get back to normal but it will take time um uh regarding the uh support that we uh, uh got at the regional and international level uh we are particularly very thankful to to the international financial institutions especially uh the world bank that has been uh providing uh assistance to afghanistan for particularly to address the economic shocks of the corona pandemic uh just recently i think today we received uh, a package of 100 million dollar by uh by the world bank uh to address the economic impacts uh of the corona impact of the corona pandemic um uh, we also uh, have received um, support uh, from from other neighboring countries like china and uh, at the international level the united states has su- supported us the the uh arab world uh, some countries in the arab world have provided support but the 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 challenge in afghanistan is is weak institutions um unfortunately we have not been able to efficiently utilize the aid uh and the financial assistance that has been received by the government uh to be to to be utilized in a in an efficient manner uh so so that's that's a big challenge uh, because we have uh, uh we we have the problem of poor governance we have uh, weak institutions we are a country that is uh, that is still in conflict and you know trying to recover from conflict and being in conflict so it's a very uh, very confusing situation so so i think uh, it's very important for the government of afghanistan it's very important for our regional partners and for the international community uh to 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 help strengthen our institutions uh but ultimately it's it's up to the afghans i mean of course the international community can provide financial assistance they can provide technical support but ultimately it's to afghans up to afghans and the afghanistan leadership and the and the government to make sure that the the the, the financial assistance and the Uh, the foreign assistance received uh, uh, from our region, regional partners and from the international community is efficiently used uh, to to help the 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 the, the uh, afghan um, people and 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 the afghan government so 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 our message um, is both to to uh, to the international community to our regional partners and to 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 the government of afghanistan uh to improve uh its 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 governance uh to fight corruption more efficiently uh and to make sure that we 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 utilize the resources uh in an efficient and effective manner uh so that we 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 we, we can uh, address the the economic impacts uh due to the corona pandemic so that's um, that's all from my side and uh, thank you thank you very much for for for
Oh, did we lose our moderator? <laughs> uh, you're muted. Ah, okay. Borzo. <laughs> you're muted. So yeah, we're the, not the mic back. is on. Not the leader back. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, uh, Sergio Sa Leteo, please uh, excuse me if I botched your name, please uh, correct me, uh, has joined us. He is the uh, Secretary of Culture and uh, uh, Creative Economy for the state of Sao Paulo uh, in, in Brazil. Um, and he's also worked in the private sector, um, uh, in the entertainment industry, uh, which is interesting because I, I think one of the um, things that you, you, you missed it earlier, we were talking about uh, the, the the psychological impediments to um, and and a, and a newspaper. You work for uh, a Folha uh, uh, of Sao Paulo, which is, uh, as I know, uh, the the most important newspaper in uh, in Brazil, uh, the, the 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 premier newspaper there. Um, and, and I guess w one of the things that I was wondering is, um, and and I'll add the question to you as well. As again, we asked it already. Um, what is the, you know, we're, we're 70 years after the so-called end of colonialization. Uh, we've had the non-aligned movement. We've had the, the sort of, you know, th th this, this, we, we've had, um, uh, 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 the, 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 we're post, uh, wretched of the earth. Um, and, and we, we but yet there's still this, uh, inability of, developing countries to work with each other and cooperate with each other and trade with each other and communicate with each other. And, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how, uh, and, 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 you, you know, I, I mentioned North Africa and um, uh, uh, Minister uh, Gonsalves said, not just North Africa, all of Africa is so disconnected from itself and yet connected to um uh, Europe uh, so so well. It's much more integrated. You know, you, you have country like Morocco and Algeria, and there's a little bit of historical issues there. But both countries are way more connected to France than they are to each other, um, and that goes across the the continent. It's a little bit different in Latin America. Yet, you know, um, you want to get from one part of Central America to another part, you have to go through Miami. Um, and, 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 and this is a, a, a tragedy as well as um, a uh, inefficiency in our global system. And I was wondering, you know, you as, as both as, as a secretary of culture uh, for a major uh, region of Brazil and a journalist and someone in the entertainment industry, is this a failure of imagination? Is this a psychological block that um, people in the so-called global south are are unable to are, are still kind of epitomizing and idolizing the the uh, the the west and the you know great white north um what is blocking uh, uh progress on this front so uh good morning everybody uh thanks for having me here i would like to apologize to you because i was experiencing some connection problems but uh, it's uh, solved right now, so uh, let's move on. It's a very uh, interesting and also complex uh, question, uh, Borzu, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to try to address it. Um, and uh, particularly uh, for uh, uh, Brazil and Brazilians, uh, uh, we, have, we are experiencing a very uh, hard time uh, regarding uh, foreign relations, international relations, and the uh, positioning of uh, Brazil in uh, the idea of uh, improving the South-South uh, dialogue. Because, uh, unfortunately, right now, our federal government is 100% uh, uh, aligned uh, with the U.S., but... Uh, uh, not, uh, um, I guess, in an adult uh, way, but uh, in in a, in a way that we are uh, totally under uh, uh, the U.S. Um, umbrella and giving full support without uh, uh, any 
uh, uh, compensation or uh, any improvement in our role in the international arena. So we are experiencing uh, sad times uh, here in Brazil regarding uh, international uh, relations. But I think uh, 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 the cultural field is uh, 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 an, an arena uh, in, in which we can really try to uh, uh, solve the puzzle that you uh, stated uh, previously uh, so, so well. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, in, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a matter of how, of course, uh, 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 <clears throat> the world is uh, organized, how the system uh, works, and uh, it's not working in the favor of the underdevelopment countries in, uh, <clears throat> in the favor of uh, uh, southern countries. So it's up to us to uh, try to establish new rules and new ways of uh, uh, position ourselves in a more uh, uh, mature and, and uh, regarding uh, way. So uh, I think it's something that we have to address, we have to face, and we have to change the rules. We, we cannot uh, wait for uh, uh, um, uh, the big countries, the big potencies to uh, change things in our uh, favor. And I think I really think that the uh, cultural field is uh, 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 a field in which we can improve a lot and we can start transforming uh, 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 the, the global relations in this uh, field. That's uh, why we uh, created in Sao Paulo, for an example, uh, a cultural center called Memorial da América Latina, which is fully devoted to Latin America uh, culture and traditions. So the idea is to have a place in Sao Paulo, and it's the biggest cultural center that we have in uh, 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 the city, uh, totally devoted to improve the relations between Brazil and other Latin American countries in the culture uh, field. That's why also we created uh, a, a very uh, special and very popular museum called the Museum of the Portuguese Language, which is devoted also not only to uh, 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 promote the knowledge of our language, but also to improve our uh, relations with the uh, Portuguese speaking countries of uh, Europe, of Asia, and also uh, Africa, especially uh, Africa. And uh, uh, through those institutions, we do a lot of uh, projects together with uh, consulates, embassies, and also uh, uh, countries. For instance, we had uh, a sampling of this uh, uh, museum, this uh, Portuguese language museum, uh, uh, traveling all around uh, Africa, uh, promoting uh, uh, <clears throat> the proximity of our uh, uh, cultures and countries in terms of uh, using the language as a common ground to find uh, connections in other uh, areas as, as, as well. So I think it's a, a matter of uh, 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 recognizing the problem, the question, uh, its importance, and address it, it, it in a practical way, doing whatever we can to uh, improve and stimulate the uh, cultural and diplomatic and economic relations between underdeveloped countries, especially southern countries, with, because we have so much in common, our cultures are so rich, uh, and uh, really uh, we can uh, 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 make the arts and the culture a tool of uh, uh, foreign relations, get more connected, and also to generate wealth, to generate jobs, to generate development. So uh, uh, it's our view, and that's what we are trying uh, to do here. We're facing, of course, right now, every uh, body in the world 
uh, are facing right now, one of the major crises that we ever had because of the uh, pandemic. But uh, uh, I think we will soon overcome it and there will be more opportunities for us to increase this dialogue and really transform the shape of the system, the shape of how the world is organized right now. We cannot be only consumer countries. We are producing countries who have a rich uh, a tradition, we have rich cultures, we have a, a very, very strong uh, uh, cultural industry, and we have to show it to the world, everybody, to have a more uh, uh, equalized uh, agenda in every area in, in the world. It's up to us. That's a task that we have to take it seriously and we have to address it and we have to transform uh, things. And uh, I really think we can do it uh, with uh, small examples or uh, big uh, 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 tasks. Great. Um, I'm getting a little warning that says that there's actually three minutes left before time is up. Um, so I, I guess I'll just throw this question out. Um, is there, uh, do any of you, uh, if you can answer as quickly as possible, have any uh, examples of really positive South-South uh, initiatives or developments that you've seen, uh, especially in the scientific field, but also in any other field that you might have uh, seen or, or run or heard about in in where 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 you may be. Well, maybe if I could uh, jump in, uh, Borsu. Uh, yes, I think uh, to look at more of the positive light at the end of the tunnel because the tunnel is still rather long. Uh, we don't know where the light really is going to shine. But uh, what we do see a bit the cooperation in South South. Uh, uh, is has been in the area of logistics. We see, for example, that um, China, we have to consider as a south, south to some degree, uh, was able to help uh, uh, actually in uh, making available personal uh, uh, protection equipment, uh, masks and other things, uh, as well as support countries with, uh, in Africa in particular. Um, with uh, some equipment and resources, uh, doctors. We have Cuba, for example, Cuban doctors, for example, Cabo Verde, have come in to help us uh, through uh, negotiated uh, arrangement naturally. We have uh, Ethiopian Airlines, as I mentioned, was actually shuttling uh, goods uh, uh, throughout many countries in Africa, are mainly out of China and Africa. And uh, we have uh, good examples which have not been shared yet uh, in countries like Rwanda, what they're actually using robots to do a lot of the work right there in the front line at airports and so forth and so on. So I think that there are potentials, but not enough yet has been done for to connect us one with the other. Great. Uh, we've got about 30 seconds left. Does anyone want to add anything uh, to uh, the, the discussion? Well, I, I will just say that I, I think this has been, you know, a little bit despite the technical problems. And, um, you know, Jose and I were talking about how um, really uh, no one does. Someone's dog is barking. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> uh, how uh, this uh, the, these these sort of conferences are basically more for uh, 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 kind of networking and shaking hands than uh, actually listening to what people have to say. Uh, but I think that what uh, you guys have said has been very interesting to me. It's especially. Uh, 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 useful to get an update from a place like Afghanistan. And I hope you guys all have a great week. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. much. Congratulations to Horizon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so Bye -bye, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to seeing all of you. We'll meet Good again. Yeah. Hopefully, Bye -bye. we'll meet again. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Congratulations, Horasis. Yeah.